So uh, I'm going to, Bank Daily Salakor is still here, and we're going to take question time, and I, I'm going to read out some questions. I'm going to unmute you right away, Bank Daily. Um, so you can talk, or you can unmute yourself. Somebody say, yes, yeah, question. Let's attend to questions. Yeah, I Good. just did. Oh, great. People have questions, and I'm, and I'm going to. Thanks, going thanks to for that fantastic presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank you much. Thank so much. Thank you very much. Now, I, I'm going to take questions one by one. Um, question, this is question for Bami Dele Salako uh, from Victory Charles. He said, Bami Dele Salako talked about mind peak, having positive mindset. What do one do when you are in a state of depression? Uh, depression is a different ballgame entirely. You need to seek mental, uh, you need to seek um, the uh, services of a mental health professional. That is very important because depression is, is not something you might be able to work yourself out um, independently. Uh, but the things you can do within the scope of your control are basically the same things I've said. Try to get yourself watching things that are positive. Try not to be alone, you know, much of the time. But in a situation like this where we have a lockdown, if you're not living with family, you want to make sure that you're on a call regularly with people you love, people who love you people who can keep you motivated through that crisis. But once this thing is over, we definitely want to seek the assistance or the services of a mental health professional to help you with the work. Because depression is very big. I know in Africa, we, we, don't, we don't pay mind to it. We don't take it seriously, but it's a real issue. And there are, there are times that we will actually require the services of a mental health professional, people who are trained in that area to help you identify the very source of that depression and to help you walk through it and walk you know, to a normal state of health. But in the meantime, get on YouTube, watch uplifting videos. They are, I mean, YouTube is, a, is an amazing platform. There's a lot of you know, content on there, uplifting content. Try and get yourself busy watching it and try and talk to someone. Keep talking to people, your family, your friends, you know, keep talking to people that will lift your spirit. Um, every day, frequently. I hope that helps. Oh, great, great, great! I want you all guys to also know that tomorrow, 8 8 p.m., we are having session two, and the person who is going to be teaching is a Zine uh, Zulu. She's she's a venture. She's an angel investor. She's somebody who invests in startups. A company that has been investing in. So they give up. I know this year they gave out twenty thousand dollars to about several startups, and. It's something, something you should not miss. It's in the ones you do. Um, she's a business mugu. Um, I, I want to bring another question again. Um, I, I like the response I'm getting. I like the response I'm getting. I like, I like the response I'm getting. Um, it's been refreshing. This is amazing, both physically and mentally, spiritually. Chris, thank you, Chris Annie. Chris Annie, you were sent to my life specifically. <laughs> I, I'm glad to be. <laughs> This, somebody said, Victor said, this is my first time in Chris Anis class. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is, this is an amazing session. These are, I don't attend such events, but this teaching year has changed my belief system. Yes, that's what we want. Wow. Thank you so much. The two lessons tonight has been inspiring. Great, 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 great. Uh, the webinar is the most productive thing I have done since the beginning of this crisis. Interesting. Um, Samuel, been plan Samuel said, Nabuku said, been planning to start something, so I see it clearly in my mind, but whenever I'm about to write it down, it gets difficult. How do we address that? Yeah, so um, when you get an idea, it doesn't have, it will not come out um, fully fleshed. This person, is even saying, this person is even saying, but whenever I write, I write it down, yeah. it gets difficult. So how can I clearly pen down my ideas? Okay, um, so perhaps you want to get clarity at first. That's the most important thing. You don't have, it doesn't have to be perfect at first. You know, you just have to write it down like a skeletal structure of the things that are coming to your mind. And then as you meditate on it, as you think on it, as you research on it, um, you will begin to have flesh. And sometimes you may not even have the skills yourself to really express that in the most presentable manner. So you want to connect with a friend, 
you know, or someone, which is where associations come into play, partnerships come into play. It's the era of collaborations. Uh, you can't go, if in so many areas, you can't go the journey alone. You have to open yourself up to support, to help. It's one of the most important things I'm learning right now, is asking for help. Uh, because you will not know how to do everything that you need to do. But I shared some time ago on Facebook, if you remember, Chris, that mm -hmm. somebody has already mastered the thing you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're having difficulty doing that thing, get in touch with them and seek counsel. It will save you, you know, it may turn 10 year, a 10-year journey into just a month's journey, you know, for you. So people have been stuck doing the same thing for 10 years. It's not working. But you get one advice, one counsel, and it's as if, boom. But that happened, you know, recently. My wife, someone has been trying to do something. She has spent money, done everything, you know, nothing worked out. And she met my wife. Just a simple, I'm telling you, you won't believe Chris. I, very, I don't want to go into the details. Every simple counsel, you will not believe it. And that was it. Everything hmm. changed, hmm. you know, for her. So talk to people, seek help, you know, with so people can help you flesh out that idea. People within your circle of influence, if you don't have such people, find them. People you can sit down with and can guide you, put you. Through. And there are courses online these days that are free as mm. well, where you can learn how to put your ideas to paper, where you can learn how to flesh out your ideas. In short, another suggestion I have how can I clearly pen down my ideas? Do you know sometimes, for instance, um, I learned uh, this is a business secret, even though I'm not supposed to be releasing it. Um, I was, I've been thinking of hosting. Because I'm a human development expert. Like, I, I, when I, I can yeah. sit down and I know I need to build people. So I want to see my, my, the goal of every meeting I hold with people, even the goal of DABA is not just information, but transformation. So what I do is that I go from the back to look at, if I am in this position of being a poor man, what will I do? Or what, will, what has helped me move from being broke to being rich. So I look at the process and document it because my own is not to just share information. My goal is transformation. Now, I, I, I looked at last year, I said, I want people to know how to increase their income in 30 days. I said, I, I, know, I know people to do this. And guess what? There's a company called Think Fic. Those That company is one of my mentoring companies. Uh, that's where Bambi Sako talked about now. There are people who have done things you've done. For instance, in, in our company, there's a company, there's a, there's a company you always see their website on my platform. It's called Founder. Look at them. This yeah, is a multi-billion yeah. <laughs> dollar education platform in Australia. Amazing. But it cannot yeah. serve the entire African market. I one day went to the CEO of Founder. I said, Nathan, I want to give you a thousand dollars. Tell me how you're building this company, man. The guy said, mm. I don't have time. What? <laughs> he said, I don't have time. He said, I said, what? 1,000? He said, I'm making it up. Can I do 3,000? He said, it's not about the money. And I said, what? He said, Chris, this is what you will do. He gave me some resources. But me, then you will not believe one of the videos he gave me. I screamed. I was watching it mm. one day for two hours. That video, he outlined the strategies he has been using to build this company for years. Boy, I got it there. I said, boom, mm -hmm. I got it. There's another company called Thinkfic. I noticed I wanted to host a, a, a six, nobody in Nigeria in the online education space I sat down to organize a conference online for seven days stretch. I don't know of, it's not a common situation. What they do is either one day, two days, and they stretch it, mm -hmm. maybe up. I was among the people in 2019 that sat people down for almost seven days, teaching people back to back to back. And I went to check, is there any platform that has done something like this? I went, I saw mm -hmm. Thinkfic. Woo! Thinkfic has organized events. Then the next thing was that I patterned what I was told to do with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may not need to even write the goal in details. You can... You exactly. Can take a picture from what your mentors or people have Absolutely. done and yeah. duplicate it. Duplication Absolutely. is easier. So true. It's easy. Don't, 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 don't make your life so stretched. No, don't, don't, don't complicate things. 
Look at, you will see that even in Daba, my company, I, I don't release, people say, Chris, you guys are supposed to do them. I say, no, I don't do them. I'm following founder's business model. You can't come and found that now and say you can drop any course. No, we have our tailor-made system of receiving the courses we want to do. And there must be system, courses we want that are actionable, that are practical, that are in high demand skill. We're launching a product, a course, yoga for, uh, uh, for entrepreneurs and business leaders. Unique way. Because we know that people need to check their health too. So it stops like that. So that's what happens to me. I don't just pen this thing down. I also look at who has done it and I follow the same way and get things done. When you see this video on Daba, welcome to Daba. It was from one of my mentors in the US, Marina. The lady, I saw what she was doing with her online education platform where she gives people scholarship and all that. And she said, put a video here. Put a video intro on Daba. Put a video intro here. I did it. And people have been watching this video to guide them on what Daba does. It's the same thing. The blue color on Facebook today is not Mark Zuckerberg's idea. It is that of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs told him. That's why till today, Facebook has not changed from white to yellow or blue. No, they maintain mm -hmm. blue and it has been blue since they were born. Why? Steve Jobs told Zuckerberg, the brand name for Facebook, color for Facebook should be blue. Facebook is one of the companies that has stayed for more than five, seven, eight years and has not changed their logo. <laughs> you wonder why. Okay, so that is Samuel Nabuku. Another question again, question, question time. I have tried to discover myself so many times and every time I end up being clueless, what do I do? Bamidele, can you answer this one before I chip in? Okay, uh, that's an interesting question. I don't know. Um, school, schools of thoughts are divided on this, on this matter. Very true. And I think I, I try to lean towards the left, which is who what your hand finds to do and in the process of that i mean be busy get busy do what is in front of you mm. make the most of it maximize mm. it make the most of it and in the process of that you will begin to discover other passions other interests as you do that thing that is in front of you if you look i follow great thinkers like seth goodin like simon sinek and all these guys seth goodin for example uh, what he's doing now is not what he started out doing. True. And you will find a lot of people like that. Many of the successful people you know today, what they are currently doing is not what they started out doing. But in the process of doing that thing they started out doing and doing it well, new pathways began to open up to them. New opportunities began to open up to them. True. You know? And then they began to develop competence in the process. They began to learn by doing. So that's the basic advice I can give uh, with regard to discovering one's passion. Of, I mean, if, for example, for me personally, I grew up in a home that was surrounded by books. So by the time I was 13, I had read so much books. I'd, in fact, I had written two unpublished novels. Hmm. If not for the, you know, that mentality that our parents had, oh, you must become a doctor. <laughs> you know what my mom did? The books, the novels that I wrote, she went and threw them away. So I, I didn't have access to them ever. She wanted me to become a medical doctor. So for me, from when I was young, I already knew that uh, this was what I wanted to do. I loved writing. I, I had already written novels. I had developed the skill. There was no confusion. But where there's no, where there's no clarity, and now I, I, don't, I don't do just writing. You know? I also now work in the non-profit sector. Mm. And this is a sector in which I had never worked before until I came to Canada. I had no expertise, no knowledge, but I have so much knowledge and expertise in the field right now, having worked in that space, you know, for about two years. In fact, I can do consultancy for anybody who wants to start a nonprofit. I can do proposal writing for if you want to raise funds from government and things like that. I know, you know, all the techniques, all the tips, everything you need to do. So these are this is an area i never imagined that i would work in before so there are things you will start out with that you will not end up with you know eventually so just whatever is in front of you do it do it well that same attitude will stand you in good stead for success in other opportunities that will open up to you hmm. as you go great same reaction great so just just do something do something next joy aruna to everyone, what are the things to bear in mind when conducting a personal audit? What questions should be asked? 
Okay, so basically the same questions, you know, I told what skills do you have now? Chris mentioned something, study trends. Very important. That cannot be overstated. Look at what people in your field. I mean, if you're already working in your field, look at what people in your field. If you're an entrepreneur, you're a small business owner, look at what other business owners in your field are doing. Current, I mean, the guys at the very top, just look at what they are doing, observe it, and see if you have the skills to compete at that level. It's very easy. It's clear. If you don't have the skills, acquire it. If you can't acquire it, who can you partner with, you know, to make it happen? make magic happen you know, in your business in your career so that's what's in auditing yourself look at your current skill sets be you know be, be 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 very radical about it don't pat yourself on the back in fact if it's possible open yourself up to uh, criticism from others people who know you you know let them analyze um, your skills help them let them offer you assistance in analyzing your current skill set and then you can decide you know on what you don't have, what you need to acquire, or what you have that is still relevant, that will still be relevant for a long time to come, and how you can optimize it uh, for greater productivity mm. and relevance future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, somebody saying, can we get the recordings of tonight's classes, even if for a token? I couldn't. Uh, yes, of course, I, I will upload it, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get it across. But just make sure you're in our Telegram channel. Make sure you are following our mails. You're going to see that update. Even if it, by, by, by Sunday, this thing should be ready. Brendan Goze said, sparkly mind, shades. But how can someone, some of that, um, okay, I think this one is asking on, uh, we, I really don't even understand this. Let me go to the next. Um, uh, what if a person has shiny object syndrome? like lack of focus and consistency, jumping from one thing to another, what can help? You just have to tell yourself to be focused. I don't think that's <laughs> another. <laughs> you just have to tell yourself to be focused. Look at me today. Do you know that every day, in my, I have a group where people trade Bitcoin daily. I mean, they are full-time Bitcoin exchangers. They trade thousands of dollars daily. Do you know that with all the things I like about Bitcoin and blockchain and cryptocurrency, I'm only focused on trading on exchanges. And I see some people who are middlemen traders. I could be making money from that too, but I choose not to because I have something more that is more than that. The time I invest in writing my book, teaching people is more valuable than anything I'm doing on trading. I'm telling you, even my book may not bring 1 million for me in one day, but trading can do that in one month or three months. But... I've looked at what would last over the other if I'm not doing the other one. So it's priority. I don't jump on things. I don't, you see some people who come into crypto today, they want to become exchangers overnight. You don't jump on, tomorrow they're in this, tomorrow they're in that. No, 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 no. It, it doesn't negate the fact that you could be in processes of, build, of doing several things while you're discovering yourself. But jumping from one thing to another without achieving results, they don't help. Now, so another person said, answered by either Chris or Bamidele, how do you balance family and work? How do you manage your time? Okay, I'm not a married man. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I discovered that out of all the speakers for tomorrow, today and tomorrow's event, I'm the only one who is not married. Oh, Jesus. Maybe <laughs> I need to go and take a master class on marriage. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, so Bamidele, how do you balance family and work? Okay, it's a, it's a question of values, really. Um, the starting point is to clarify your values. What's most important to you? Once you are clear on what's most important, then that uh, question answers itself. Um, so you obviously, you obviously allocate time. You know, that is just what you have to do. It has to be time. Work time is work time. And family time is family time. And there will be times you, you should strike an understanding with your family, with your wife, for example, or your husband, there will be times when you need to work on your dreams where you may not be able to afford um, that usual um, time period that you assign to family uh, relationships and things like that. But for those moments, your family, if you've always, if, I mean, if they know that your family, your, for example, your spouse or your kids know how much uh, you prioritize them, it will be easy for them to make those concessions 
uh, when you make those demands. But if you if you're always you're the type to always work, always work, always work, never have any kind of time, any family time, any downtime, any vacation time with your family, uh, then it becomes even more difficult. So it's very important to prioritize based on your values. You know, dedicate family time, family time, dedicate you know work time. Or for for example, weekdays for me. At least one to two hours in the evenings, I spend with my family, with my wife and my kid after work. We just you know, chill, we talk, we watch TV, we pray when we want to, and then immediately after, once it's once the two hours are over, these are weekdays. I'm back into my home office where I am currently, and I'm doing whatever I need to do. And then on the weekends, I spend you know, like more time, four hours, three hours. But when I'm busy, when I have a project I'm working on. Thankfully, I'm blessed with an understanding wife who is reasonable. Mm. She knows that I need to do these things that I'm doing okay, for the good of the family, anyway, for the future of the family. Um, so I, she knows that for that period, I am going to be otherwise engaged. You know, and then she makes those confessions. Also, somebody like I could give you the example of Gary V, uh, who is one of the guys I follow. Uh, Gary V, for example, he he has reached an understanding with his wife Monday through Friday. I'm not kidding you. Monday through Friday, not no time for family. His wife takes care of the children and everything. He's focused on building, on the business, on everything. Saturday, Sunday, no work at all. Hmm. Just family time. No work at all. You know. So this thing is in levels also. You know, because Gary is at the level where he has he has people, he has reliable people, competent people. Can handle things for him, especially on weekends when you're not there. But when you're just starting out, it's very important that because you're virtually everything you're the COO, you're the CEO, you're the CMO, you're the CFO. So you want to strike an understanding with your partner and make let, help them understand that this is a temporary arrangement, that things will get better, that things will evolve. Or at the same time, based on your values, you want to create some time, at least an hour a day or two hours a day to spend time with your family and when um, you're involved in projects that will take you away from family your wife or your husband will be able to understand uh, that you need to make those sacrifices for now and that it's temporary great 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 i think that's that's the best uh, option that's the best um word i could hear even for me personally uh i've already looked at it that even with managing my time there are, there are times in my company where I really do not have things to do. I'll look at it and like, okay, all I'm just doing is monitoring. There are, there are weeks that I've gone that I didn't add any input to the company. Such a time, I even go back, meet my mom, my younger ones, make sure I see them and get yeah. to have family time with them. Because um, as the first son, I'm also like the father. I'm also the father of the house now. So I get to call my younger mm -hmm. one, get to reach out, know who doesn't have this one, know who has this one. And, and, and on and on. Um, somebody is asking, how do I expand my audience base? Man, you need to learn selling. Joshua Godwin, how do I expand? You need to learn selling. Uh, if, you are, if you are in this meeting, if you are in this meeting and you've not taken any of my courses, one of the courses that will help you to start, this course is one of the most dangerous courses. It's the cheapest course on DABA, but it's the most dangerous course. WhatsApp monetization. You saw people saw people who are testing will say that I, I have taught more than what was supposed to be here. It wasn't just WhatsApp here. If you learn this thing, you will know. In short, if you want to learn how to, to if you take this course, in the next one week, you are going to gain access to 250 people added to your contact. If you don't get them added or you don't see them with my words, I'll refund your money and give you money back again for wasting your time. So people, when people ask me this question, I really don't answer them because there's a lot of things about building audience. It takes time, it takes knowledge, it takes certain action too, okay? And you've got to, you've got to do this. Somebody say, my question goes to Mr. Bamidele. I am Maureen Green. I'm a writer. I started last year and I started self-discovery through fictional writing. Good. However, I moved further and now I'm into content creation and more such as SEOs. But recently, I get stuck and lack the boldness to start. I don't know. Help me. To start what exactly, Maureen? Yeah, because I, I don't understand. 
to start what exactly? Because I can't go down to your question. I need to, I, I can't go down because anybody, once I'm going down, I'm skipping all questions. So maybe you, we could get to address that. I know Maureen, she's, all, she's, she's also one of those working who just got into our editing team. She's a very good editor. She writes and she about, well, well, I get stuck and lack the boldness to start. I don't know what, what exactly is the help. Okay, maybe we'll get to that later. Bright and Bass, I have a question. So we are to keep positive mindset towards everything we do. But at, this, at what stage do we know it's time to put a project or a skill to an end? Hmm. This is a very technical question, but how do I address this? At what stage do we know it's time to put a project on? Okay, this is okay. Now, um, I think this has to also do with things like when do I give up on something? There's this notion that mm -hmm. we don't give up, we don't give up. That's not true. There are certain times, for instance, now in a business now, if you're doing something for long and this thing is taking more stress and effort out. You, may, you need to just sit down with yourself and tell yourself, Ben, I don't think I can continue with this and move on. You could close that line of business. As long as you're not quitting business, you could close a line. Okay. Uh, for instance, for me, now there are things I was doing in 2014. There's time I believed in going to campus to campus. And now, over time, I've discovered how to sit down and build. And the nature or way I'm building things is different. So, what I'm, the way I'm speaking to people now, in different parts of the world via this Zoom call. Uh, if I was just focused on campus to campus to campus, my influence wouldn't grow this much. Because you may only just know me in uh, Akumba or UNN or ASUT or UI. But now the influencer, so I, I, I feel you should sit down with yourself and when you sat down and you've done those audits, you now know which one to continue and which one not to continue with. Somebody say first time, I okay, 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 okay. I have there's, 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 okay. Chris, there's, okay. there's a book I'm going to send to you so you can share with everyone. Wow. Uh, it's written by Seth, Seth Godin. It's called The Deep When to Stick and When to Quit. I'm good. going to send it to you so you can, you okay. can share with everyone. Thank you very much. Um, good. Joshua Godin, I have skills I can teach. How do I explain my audience? It's been very difficult. Can I have little views on WhatsApp? I've already tell, I told you what to do. Take my WhatsApp monetization course. That's 10 US dollars. And now, um, Anthony Joseph, my question is to Bami Dele. You said constructive criticism build you than praise. Can you explain that a little more? I think that's feedback. You're getting feedback. From exactly. Customers. Absolutely. You to build yourself. For instance. Candid feedback. Exactly, candid feedback. For instance, now, there are things we are building on Daba. If I, uh, there are, I don't know if there's a note I can even open here. There's a note I'll show you here. These are things that we did not plan that we're going to fix this month. But we are fixing it now because our users told us, oh, they had it not navigating here. And what they are also doing is also helping us grow because we now know that, man, people, traffic is coming to our website and they don't easily navigate through this, so we must fix this. And the more we are fixing those things on Daba, we are building the company like that too. So those constructive criticism help you to build and pray. So it's better than just somebody who is, not, who is not telling me the truth and telling me, oh, Daba, Daba is the best, Daba is the best. Daba is the best, Daba is the best. I know, but uh, you should be, I should also see something that tells me, I, I went to your website and I didn't get this part. Well, then we fix it because the more we fix those things, we are going to give users a better experience. How do we move sentiment and emotion from taking a business plan? You just have to be truthful to yourself. Just be truthful to yourself. You know, this is reality. Uh, Cyril Rose said, this is just an introduction of what you can see in Daba. If you, if you guys enter Daba.school, your brain must, and I mean must reset. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good. Victory Charles said, the answer on writing ideas clearly by Bam Delis Alako is fire. Good. Uh, okay. Uh, good. Maureen said to Mr. Creech, you speak with so much confidence. I want to ask what sponsors your confidence as regards to financial planning and hitting your financial goal before the year runs out. See, one thing is this. What is the worst case scenario? Now, if you say to yourself, I'm a success, and you say it with all boldness, and you say to yourself again, I'm a failure. Isn't it the same mouth you used to say the same thing? Now, what's the worst case scenario? At the end of the year, you don't achieve all your goals. Will anybody kill you? Will anybody kill you? No. 
Let me tell you one thing you've got to know. The world respects people who put the confidence on what they do, who, who, who speak with confidence, who, who do things with confidence. You've just got to be bold. Sometimes you may not even know everything, how everything will get be figured out. But I tell you, the moment you express your confidence in things, things begin to align and work out. They may not all the time, but they will. Victory said, uh, if you need a professional to talk to, Victory, check out money. Victory said, question, a health worker combining business and professional is complicated. Any advice and such? Don't leave your job. But uh, this is where planning comes to play, okay? Planning comes to play. Uh, just sit down, do effective planning, and, and, and things will work out. Somebody said, why does Bamidile sound so much like my uncle? <laughs> He's your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, I want to learn a skill, but I'm still confused about the one I will choose. And it's been a challenge for me. Please, Mr. Chris and Mr. Bamidele, hope you can help me out. I want to give you a personal advice. Do you know one thing about learning a skill is that the skill you're even learning today, you may not even use it now. And maybe next year, it will be so relevant. For instance, I began to follow a mentor and he began to show me things about public speaking. I wasn't addressing crowds when I was learning public speaking. So there are basic skills you must know. You must know things like selling. If you don't know how to sell, you learn how to code. If you don't know how to code, learn how to write. If you don't know how to write, learn how to speak. Then look at areas that you know that the world, like I said, study trends. That's why you can even start with any course on Daba today. WhatsApp monetization is one. Look at other courses are expensive. Oh. And normally if I have the art of saying, okay, all everyone should buy a course that's not expensive. I'll be telling you other courses, but I know the reason why I'm putting this course. It gives a kind of direction on things you can be doing, okay? So go on that. Don't look at yourself. When you do that personal audit, you can now say, okay, like last two days or three days ago, I bought a course called Data Entry by Chioma, the founder of Accounting Hub. I don't even, to me, I've not even gone, I'm sure they've done, they've done the webinar, I've not attended. You know why I bought the course? I bought that course for my younger sister. My younger sister is the head of customer care in my company. I want her to upgrade her skill. I know that the more she learns, I will learn from her and know what she's doing. I'm also take a look at the idea, uh, what, she, what Shoma has taught, and I can use it to fix some things in my company. So I bought the course immediately. Okay, so keep buying and keep building. Okay. Uh, as a startup, is it ideal to multitask? If yes, how can I? Because this makes me not to do a lot of things. Hey, multitasking is not for everybody. It is not for everybody. Okay? It is not for everybody. If you can't multitask, for instance, you see yourself trying to, if in multitasking, raise a team. Like me now, I'm running three companies. I have Chris Annie as a brand. I have Digital Abundance as a company. And I have Blue Valley. Blue Valley is a cooperative. I have investors in Blue Valley who are not concerned with, crypto, with Chris Annie and and, and, and digital abundance. But there's a face, I've done that. Why? Because I've been able to build my brand and my team. So I'm at the level of just directing affairs. And that thing I'm about to do now is to employ a manager who knows my kind of work. But I'm not doing that now immediately. Okay, I'm carefully selecting that. So now I'm working with every head of the team to fix things. Because I'm still at the growth, I'm still at the startup stage. I'm not at the stage where I'll leave my company for one month and things. Of course, I know people say those things are structural and all that, but I won't just leave things. I must make sure Tamidare is doing something. I must make sure Gideon is doing something. I must make sure this person is doing something and things are being fixed. Okay? Um, good. Then uh, another person. Uh, um, let me look for. So Samuel said, thank you, sir. One thing I've learned is that you've consistently said the word mentor. Seems like one can't go very far without having a mentor. Funny enough, the mentors don't even, don't even need to see them face to face. See what Bam Dele Salako is saying, Seth Godin, Gary V, their books. That's why Bam Dele, if anybody comes to me today and say, Chris, uh, mentor me, mentor me. I, I, first I say, you're not serious. You know why? I have a lot <laughs> of resources on YouTube that can change your life. You don't need to, I, I can, let, me, let, uh, let me see if I can get this chart. There's a guy trying to get, um, get me to teaching cryptocurrency trading and he's like i hope when i enroll you'll be able to guide me i said for hundred dollars <laughs> you should be joking me i said even for a thousand dollars the work i'm doing now i'm telling you the way i'm engaged now if you have a coaching class to pay me i say chris start coaching me on cryptocurrency trading i'm going to pay one thousand dollars today start tomorrow i'll say no i've done it i did it this week 
If you pay down, your classes start in the next three weeks or the next one month. You know why? The $1,000 is what for me. When I have more things I'm building and fixing and I know what I'm gaining every week, mm-hmm. my value is so much on the increase. My value is so much on the increase. You can't, you can't pin me down to learn one-on-one. Ex- except you get to that phase where you actually earn it. Maybe, maybe if you bring it $10,000 now, maybe I will now consider. But I believe that my course, because even when I finish coaching you, you will still go back to that, my online course and look at the steps I took there too. Okay? So that is it. Don't say, Chris, mentor me, mentor me. How come you say I should mentor you and you are missing an event like this? You're not serious. This is time to invest in yourself. It is in me. T- my, my associate know me. I even teach more crazier in meetings like this than when I even sit down to say I want to have some um, time with people to teach them. Because this time I pour out so many things. Okay? Now, I desire a mentorship relationship. This relationship is supernatural. Help me excel. You have the pattern I want. I just addressed that issue now. So follow it like that. Uh, Follow it like that. Follow it like that. I don't enjoy reading, but I prefer listening to audios like the webinar going on now. What would be my fate? I've not read more than 10 books this this year. I've not not read more than five books complete this year. But I've listened, I've watched plenty, 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 plenty videos. So if it, if that is what works for you, there are audio books. Maxwell, John Maxwell's books. There are times I'll sit on my bed and I'll be jotting from audio books. So that's why they create audio, video, and uh, uh, books. I'm telling you. So you don't need to say until you read all the books. No, you can the podcast. Everything is designed to help you with the pattern that works for you. I don't do much of reading. I do much of sitting down to watch videos, audios, and I get points. Caleb said, please, what's the name of the second training website you mentioned, I think? Okay, ThinkFit. ThinkFit is an online education platform in the U.S. Um, you can learn and not apply. Okay, so um, let me keep getting the questions. Uh, at this point, I said, WhatsApp monetization is really a nice course. What's more than the money? Thank you very much. Okay, I think Maureen has now... Maureen has now answered as, let me go back to Maureen's question. Uh, and this is for Bamidele Salako. Wow, we spent extra 30 minutes here. Okay, so my question goes to, I'm a writer. I started last year and I started self-discovery through fictional writing. However, I moved further and I'm now into content creation and much such as SEOs. But recently I got stuck and lacked the boldness to do and write more content to my name. Sometimes when clients send in job, I end up delivering late. I am not consistent with my online courses. Let me say I am lacking consistency. How do I build consistency? Before Bamidele will answer, I think one of the things you need to do now is you need to cut short so many things you are trying to learn at the same time and prioritize what you need to do that is more important. For me, if I were you, I'll look at first, what is helping me grow my revenue? Okay, if it is those jobs, I don't need to deliver them late because if you don't have money, you cannot even pay for online course tomorrow. So prioritize those jobs. Um, if you're saying SEO, do you really even need SEOs for now? Do you really need so many things on so many skills? Prioritize. Then look at, okay, I can give 40% to delivering jobs, 20% to this, 20% to this, 20% to this, and follow those timetables. It's not easy, but you just got to do it. Bam Dele, please, you can answer since it's also your field. Yeah, I don't think I could answer any better than you You've already did. You have to prioritize what is bringing revenue and make sure you deliver. That is very important. Um, and also, um, what is really stopping you from starting uh, your writing? Everybody has that fear initially, like especially if you just started out. But how will you know if you don't try? So you just have to do it. A lot of writers fall into that trap. You want something perfect from the start. But many times, Chris, even for jobs that uh, I have been, because I do, for example, in my organization, I do reporting, which I'm paid separately for, from my own, from what I, from what I do, my core function within the organization. I'm mm-hmm. paid for writing reports uh, to our funders. We have a lot of funders for the different programs that we run, so I write reports uh, for them. Sometimes when I start out, it's mm-hmm. almost as though I am struggling, but I mm-hmm. keep at it. And then within... 20, 30 minutes, ideas just start to flow. And so sometimes you have, that's what I told you, um, said earlier in my presentation, that there are times you won't feel like it. There are times you won't feel like it, but professionalism requires that you keep at it. 
but you just keep doing it. And then the wellspring of ideas will break open and you will just, you, you just flow into a rhythm and then bam, there you go. So okay. whenever you feel that fear, that is when you should, that should be your motivation to write. Whenever you feel something trying to stop you from writing, that is your motivation. That is the cue that you need to actually get to write. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think um, somebody said I, 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 um, somebody said I have, uh, I haven't added all those contacts. I deliberately did, uh, but yet I have leveraged and learned from that. But I have made six figures from my business, which is what I make in a year before. Daba is great. Mr. Bamidele, you are soft. Your words went straight into my head. Great. Thank you for that feedback. Thank, Thank you, you for that feedback. Okay, somebody's saying is Daba on APK. Just go to www.daba.school. Come on. Don't be lazy here. Yeah. One of the things I discovered that young people do is they want you to almost do everything for them. Go to www.daba.school. Okay? <laughs> and do that. Somebody said, I don't have any skill bringing in passive income. I'm trying to merge affiliate marketing and graphic design, but it's not really easy as well as have my school books with start to my WhatsApp monetization class. I know what I'm giving you guys. Use the formula in my WhatsApp monetization class and it will do you a lot of good. I think we can call it a night today with what we've learned today. Bami Dele, thank you so much. I love you, sir. And I, I want us to have more podcasts, the way the Gary V and Grant Cardone and Ty Lopez. Yeah, we, exactly. <laughs> we, 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 are the, we are the dawn for our industry in Africa. 